Welcome to Broadleaf's webinar on multi-tenant case studies. We will be going over Broadleaf's multi-tenant edition today and a few different deployments that we've seen our clients use. I'm Brad Buell, and we originally had the introduction of our multi-tenant edition two years ago, actually this month. You can actually go search Broadleaf Commerce on YouTube and find that multi-tenant edition introduction. Uh, to start with, first clarification, Broadleaf's multi-tenant edition is not a software as a service or SaaS-based solutions where stores are shared across a single infrastructure or pods, as I've heard it called in, in different scenarios. We enable our clients to have SaaS-based solutions. We enable our clients to have multiple tenants within their infrastructure, and that's what we're going to cover today. We have been busy with our multi-tenant edition. We've had many successful clients now in production. And here with me today is Daniel Colgrove, our head of support, who will be taking us through features and some client implementations. Daniel, thanks for joining today. Happy to be here. Well, the reasons for clients going with the multi-tenant edition of Broadleaf are varied, but most concerns are with simplifying either technical or business process complexities. We're going to cover a few of those technical or business process complexities today, the first being multiple customer-facing sites. You might have a business that has multiple franchises. You might have resellers that are dispersed geographically that have separate sites or separate storefronts. We've got, secondly, multiple catalogs. So when you have a shared catalog across, say, different stores or even across, again, different geographies, there's additional complexity to how those catalogs get updated and pushed out. And then third, uh, we will be covering marketplaces today. Uh, marketplaces can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. What we're talking about in this context is having a marketplace of multiple vendors with their own managed catalog items where you have customers able to come to that marketplace of multiple vendors that manage their cataloged items and be able to purchase across those different vendors. We do handle at Broadleaf a variety of marketplace scenarios, and we can have, for instance, vendors be able to ship products directly to a consumer, cross dock it between our clients, or have it shipped directly out of a client warehouse. Just as a, another side example of how marketplaces can be used within Broadleaf. Our multi-tenant edition is an expansion, if you will, of our Enterprise Edition. Many of the features, and in fact, all of the features that are in our Enterprise Edition are also available in our Multi-Tenant Edition. Uh, but with that, I want to turn it over to Daniel to talk about, before we get into case studies, what we're going to cover in the overall webinar. Great. Thank you, Brad. So there's two primary areas that we want to hit today, the first being the features and capabilities of the Multi-Tenant Edition. Many of these actually have been vetted by customers and we receive feedback on some of the features and capabilities and I think we do a really good job of trying to take that feedback and incorporate that into the product. And second then, we can take these features and capabilities and kind of lay them over different ways using those for solutions. And so specifically, we'll be talking about three different models today. Now, three models is really just the starting point. There's many different things you can do as you start to explore the different features and capabilities that we have, and you can put them together in different ways. Uh, but these are just three different models that we want to call out specifically today. So uh, the first feature and capability that we really want to pull out is, is multi-catalogs. So with multi-catalogs, there's three key areas that I want to touch on today, uh, specifically the different types of catalogs that we support how those catalogs can be arranged in relationships. And then once those relationships are in place, how can the data be managed between those catalogs? And that last bullet point you see is catalog overrides. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And so within the catalog types, we have two key catalogs that you can define. You can do a, a template catalog or what we sometimes call a master catalog. And that allows you to put your content in at a level where it can be kind of abstracted out and be and reused across different sites, as well as be the, the master, if you will, of separate catalogs. And we'll talk a little bit about how that happens with the relationships. Now, you can have multiple of these template catalogs. And so you do have the ability to set up a, a little bit of a hierarchy between these catalogs. And then as you go in and you start to define your sites, a site would have its own catalog as well and you can associate some of these 
template catalogs or master catalogs with a given site. Within the relationships, you can set up a site catalog and it only be your site catalog. And so there's use cases where you would just define a standalone catalog. In that, in that case, there is no overarching master catalog. It's a pretty simple model. Uh, you set up your, your single catalog, you establish your categories and your products, and, and it is what it is at that particular point. And then you can start to get into these hierarchical catalogs where you can set up one or more master catalogs and then you can derive from there into children catalogs. And, and there's a lot of different varieties that you can do within that. But as you set up these relationships, there's two key approaches that we have defined to allow you to do that. And the first one is what we call reference catalogs. And, and the reference catalog, a very thin implementation of a catalog, and it relies very heavily on the content of the master catalog. And so in this case, you have your master catalog defined with your categories and your products. And then you come and you define a child catalog. And you say that this child catalog is derived from a master, but it's only derived as a reference. And so once you define that catalog, like the very first thing you look at, you'll find that that catalog actually doesn't have any of its own data at that point because it's really referencing the master. And then as you go in and you start to manage your catalog, then data will start to come into play and will be associated with that child catalog. The second type of relationship is this deep copy of catalogs. And you can establish a child catalog and actually say, hey, I want this child catalog to be an exact duplicate or exact copy of, of the master catalog. In that case, we do deep copy of the content. There's still a relationship between that master and that deep copy catalog in that if you go back into the master and you make a change, that content can be propagated down into that deep copy catalog. And then the last item here is just the catalog override. The child catalog does have the capability or can have the capability to override content from that master. And so a common thing that we see is that the, the child catalog would come in and override the price. And so the master catalog contains uh, the name and the title and, and you know, all the key uh, pieces of information, but then the child site comes in, a child catalog comes in, they override the price. So that's a very common use case where you see overrides taking place. So that's, that's kind of the, the key pieces with the catalog. So from a site level, uh, we have two different types of sites that you can set up. It's a template site and a standard site. And so the template site is very similar to what we talked about with uh, template catalogs. And this is kind of a foundation point for any commonality that you might have within sites. And so you can set up common themes or common content items or content data that you might have and, and set it up in a template site. Now the template site in and of itself is not a, a site that customers will come visit. This really is just a way for us to set up some common items that then can be shared down within the standard sites. The standard site then can be created, and those are the sites that customers would come to and they would hit. But this, the standard sites are derived from the template sites and can and then receive different content from those template sites. And so that association is actually handled through what we call profile content profiles. So content profiles allows you to go in, you can establish a profile, and then within that profile you can set up pages, you can set up content items, you can set up content zones, which are really the placeholders for your content item. It really allows you to manage all your content concerns within this particular profile. And then just like we saw with catalogs where you can derive um, or you can have some hierarchies within the catalogs, you can do a very similar concept with profiles. And so you can have a parent profile and then derive child profiles off of that. And then when you go in and you create your site, you associate those profiles to that site. And then the site takes on the behavior of those particular content profiles. And then the last piece is the catalog association with those sites. So when you set up your, your site and you associate catalogs to it, that obviously drives your categories and your products and, and those types of concerns. We do provide the ability for you to uh, manage the edibility of those particular catalogs. So if you have a master catalog that is strictly managed by your team and you don't want any site to be able to override any content from that particular catalog, then you can associate that catalog to the site and establish it as read-only. And in that particular case, that, that site makes use of the catalog, but it doesn't have any type of management capability within it.
And then the second one is you can associate a catalog to a site and you can give them the ability to edit the content. All right, and so the last feature that I want to touch on is the ability for us to administer catalogs in the sites. You start looking at the catalog hierarchies, um, how you derive catalogs, how you associate catalogs to sites, how you set up the content profiles and you associate those with the sites. Obviously, there's a lot of different pieces in play as you start to set up a multi-tenant solution. And so we have our administrative portal that exposes the catalogs and the sites and these different concerns so that you can manage them. Now, one thing that we have set up is you can actually come in as a administrator and sign in at a what we call a global level. And that really allows you to set up a team of people who might be your super users or your Uber administrators. And they can come in and they can go from the global scope and dive down into individual catalogs or individual sites and maintain this content. And so it's a single login and allows them to, to go across those different concerns, different sites, different categories, different catalogs, and it's just a lot easier for them to maintain it. Likewise, you can also define an administrator that has access to a single site. And, and so there's use cases where you want to be restrictive on what they can do, what catalogs they can maintain, or what sites they can work on the content with, and then give people specific access to just that. And then because we're sitting on top of the Broadly framework, we also have the security framework that we have in place where you can have a bit more fine-grained control over individual entities. And so specifically, you can allow somebody to go in and manage a catalog, but restrict them from maintaining categories. Thanks, Daniel. So in summary, Broadleaf's multi-tenant edition has a single administrative console that handles multiple catalogs or multiple sites or content in a hierarchical relationship. So now's the part of the webinar where we're going to turn to saying, what does that practically mean for businesses? And there's a few different case studies that we're going to go through. The, the first three on this slide, the multi-brand or multi-site case study, multi-catalog, and then marketplace. We can also handle international sites, and so an, an initial concern might be, well, doesn't your enterprise edition handle international sites? Yes, it does. If you sign up for a demo at broadleafcommerce.com slash demo, if you download the community version of our software, you'll notice that we come with a reference site that includes different geographies, that includes different language, and different price lists for products. Where our clients have used multi-tenant edition of Broadleaf and international sites is if you want to have those different locales as completely separate front-end sites or completely separate catalogs. We can also be used as a SaaS solution, and we do have an OEM license that, uh, that we will enter into where you have a shared overridable content catalog, just like Daniel mentioned earlier, where you might have a hierarchical relationship or you might have, say, a reseller or franchise solution, as well as verticalized SaaS offerings, so that if you want to go into a specific vertical and offer a solution that's deployed in a common way, our multi-tenant edition can help enable that. That being said, let's get into our few case studies. And first up is broadly fused in a multi-brand or multi-site solution. Um, you could have multiple front-end sites, as we've discussed, with one admin to rule them all. J.R.R. Tolkien would be proud. And you've got on the bottom right here three different sites. And the interesting thing you could see is that you could even have a brand that manages multiple sites. So you could imagine if a brand in the U.S. also wants to have a separate EU site, we can do that with even the same brand catalog and content. A little plug for this, we are going to have an upcoming multi-brand webinar with Broadleaf client Icon Fitness on October 18th, and that will be a Forrester-sponsored um, webinar as well. So uh, please save the date for October 18th. That'll be our next multi-tenant webinar. But with that, Daniel, let's talk about, funny enough, a fitness-based vertical client <laughs> that has deployed a multi-brand solution. So on this first particular case study, we do want to focus really on the, the multi-tenant or multi-site um, side of, of, of these features. With this particular customer, one of the challenges really was the number of properties that they had, the number of sites, and the fact that each one of these sites were on their own platform and being and administered independently. And so in this particular case, 14 sites were consolidated onto the Broadleaf platform using the multi-tenant edition. 
And obviously the, the key catalyst there is that there's a single administrative interface that they can use to manage these 14 properties. Uh, and then within those 14 properties, they can have master catalogs if they choose to, or more specifically, they can have distinct catalogs for each one of those sites. And so it was a really good fit for this particular solution for them. But as we talked to them about their solution, I think a, a couple of other things kind of came through that I thought were very interesting. The first thing is uh, really just the overall performance. So these, these were moved over onto the Broadly platform, and it resulted in two times, even over two times, better site performance, which I think was, it was a, kind of a surprise that in addition to what they already knew they were going to get with the multi-attendant, that even better was some additional performance on top of that, which is great. The second thing that came out was the velocity improvements that they saw on their dev team. And I guess if you really think about it, though, it makes some sense. If the previous solution had 14 separate and distinct sites, 14 separate most likely 14 separate code bases, 14 separate deployments, and consolidating those onto one platform with a common framework. You do have the, the ability to leverage or write it once and use it across those 14 sites. And so as you, you look at it from that perspective, you can start to see how development velocity can be improved. And of course, one of the key things that they were looking for from the business side was really just to streamline their business process and to have the one administrative tool uh, that allowed them to manage across these different properties, and that was obviously a result that they saw in this in this particular solution. Let's move on to our next solution, which is a multi-catalog solution. As you can see here, you've got a master catalog in the depiction on the right that can be sent to different store sites. So you could you could imagine store.yourclientname.com. Each of those stores can be uh, managed globally with different currencies and languages, again, with a single administrative interface on the back end. So you've got a master catalog that then can have site overrides. So if a particular client uh, of yours or customer of, of yours wants to put in additional uh, catalog components or change up pricing or content to that catalog, then they could have that ability if you give it to them. So to talk about this next case study that happens to be uh, in a loyalty vertical, Daniel, back over to you. So on this particular one, obviously we are focused on multi-catalog, uh, but I really don't want to downplay the way that the multi-site really kind of comes together and, and the, two, the two cooperate very well together. And so in this particular case, the, the customer has several um, sites that they manage. Um, it's across uh, the different regions, got different languages, uh, and, but they also, they bring it together at a store level, and it's a, it's a per site level. And so the ability for them to have a, a master catalog that they can provide content to all of these sites was a key feature that they were looking for. And one of the things that it also allowed them to do is, because it was a, a loyalty play, and there were sites that had differences in what type of items that they wanted to be able to showcase or different products that they wanted to be able to showcase. Uh, they were able to have the master catalog, and then as they established the site-level catalogs, they were able to add some new content if it was needed or new products as it was needed, but they could also restrict products as well. And so they had that flexibility of adding and removing as they needed to as they set up and stood up new, new stores. And likewise, so as I mentioned too, is the play between multi-catalog and multi-site, the ability for them to set up profiles and have different profiles for different sites that are very similar in how they look and they feel. And then so you have families of sites that they can be driven by the different profiles. And so the consistent catalog structure, the ability to have some consistency in how your profiles are set up, and then to be able to manage that within the administrative portal is, was a big play for them. And then obviously as you bring those together and you stand up new sites, the onboarding of new sites is a lot easier when you can take advantage of those higher level concerns around the master catalog and the master profiles, if you will. Great. And then for a final layer of complexity, we'll, we'll dive into a marketplace solution. Um, now marketplace can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. What we're talking about here is having multiple vendors that provide different products and they're able to manage their own catalog and have their own section within a website. And so product offerings across those various catalogs can be browsed and bought by consumers in a single store, so across vendors. And then you've got you know, the ability to ultimately deliver through a variety of mechanisms. 
So Daniel, why don't you explain to us again, and this is, I believe, the home vertical a marketplace solution. Sure. This last use case, we do bring together the both the concept of the multi-catalog, but there's also really an interesting play around how you can isolate administrative users as well. And so in this particular case, you have a, a series of third-party vendors that are participating and managing their own catalogs. And so you have the, the isolated catalogs where the vendors can come into the portal. They are restricted to just their catalog, and they can maintain their, their products within that. You can set up a category taxonomy that can be established at the master level and then drives down into this catalogs. And so if you, if you know very specifically, I want to have this taxonomy of categories, set it up, and then when the vendors come in, they are putting their products within that taxonomy, which is a pretty nice way to, to, to manage kind of how your different categories are going to lay out within your website. Now, because the multi-tenant edition sits on top of the framework, you still have the ability to extend and customize as you need to. And so within these multi-vendors, as Brad mentioned at the beginning of, of this talk, you might have different fulfillment processes for each one of these vendors. And so there's a very possibility that you'll need to go in, you'll extend, and you'll customize, and you'll integrate into different fulfillment systems or in different ways with these multiple vendors. And so being on top of that framework, you can certainly do that. And so in this particular use case, though, we have multiple vendors coming together and being showcased on a single site. And then within that single site, then you have products that cut across these vendors. You have the ability to add features such as um, comparing products within that. Great. Well, thank you, Daniel. So, again, broadly, multi-tenant edition with a single admin, multiple catalogs, multiple sites or content, and a hierarchical relationship um, handles a lot of different tough scenarios. We handle, when we say multi-everything, we mean multi-locale, multi-site, multi-brand, multi-vendor, multi-currency, multi-catalog, multi-content. That's why we've marketed kind of multi-everything. As we've talked about a few different scenarios, multi-catalog site and, and marketplace type solutions, ultimately, as we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, the features in our multi-tenant edition can be used beyond those scenarios. Some of those other things are SaaS-based solutions. And then finally, the benefits do exceed the operational management benefits. They can include both performance and development improvements in addition to streamlining business process improvement. You can always reach us at sales at broadleafcommerce.com, Twitter's at Broadleaf, and of course you can find Broadleaf Commerce on YouTube.com.